Hello, my name is Mohamed Khalil. Uh, I am a PhD candidate at the Graz University of uh, Technology. Uh, we at uh, the Educational Technology Department uh, at the University uh, are making research on educational technology and on the massive open online courses. Uh, we have our uh, platform, uh, which is the iMOOCs. We are doing uh, research there and we are studying the behaviors and hidden patterns of learners. Uh, my part is uh, mainly about learning analytics and uh, to study the, uh, the, the impact of uh, massive open online courses on the learning in general and also to study their patterns and how we can improve uh, learning there. Our paper portraying MOOCs learners, a clustering experience using learning analytics, we will examine one of the delivered MOOCs on the iMOOCs platform and we will use learning analytics to make a clustering uh, analysis on the participants of the MOOC. Therefore, we will show that there are no real big difference between the traditional face-to-face -face learning and the online courses. So what is the deal behind massive online courses? Actually, these MOOCs uh, have uh, a lot of participants from all over the world. Therefore, they are varied uh, with their educational level, with their age, and uh, with their gender. Um, researchers have been looking at uh, categorizing uh, the participants of massive online courses so that in order to um, control the uh, a big issue of uh, online courses, which is the dropout rate, and also uh, to engage uh, the learners into better learning. To do so, a field called learning analytics could be a technological fix for these problems, and it actually promises to provide uh, techniques and tools uh, to make this easier for all uh, online environments. Such, uh, such as the MOOCs. Uh, learning analytics can uh, also show us a hidden patterns and behavior and study with the behaviors of, uh, the, uh, of the learners. It has a combination of different disciplines such as computer science, psychology and statistics. Uh, therefore, in this paper, we will use a combination of computer science and statistics to reveal some of this hidden patterns and also to cluster students into categories. iMOOCs is an Austrian MOOC platform. It offers courses uh, that target uh, university students from uh, Graz University of Technology and uh, Graz University. And also these courses still open to the public. The platforms ensures some of the education and technology principles, which are the lifelong learning and the open educational resources tracks. Our analysis is based on a summer course provided by the Graz University of Technology called Social Aspects of Information Technology. This course is obligatory for the university students, but it is still open for the public. Generally, this course is talking about information technology and its implications on the society. There were 838 participants totally, 459 are the university students, 379 are the external learners. The completion rate for the university students was 80%, while for the external students were 11.3% and this is actually can be explained because university students have to do this course while the low percentage of uh, the external students is also okay and it is above the average which is around 6% and now let's have a look at the analysis the main goal behind clustering is to assign each participant in the MOOC to a suitable group with common behaviors we used a k-mean algorithm for the clustering part. The expected result should be clustered with activities and characteristics of each student in the MOOC. We used MOOCs indicators to make this possible. The used variables in clustering were reading frequency, 
and this indicates the number of times a user clicked on particular post in the forum. And the second indicator is the writing frequency, which is a variable that determines the number of written posts. And the third indicator is videos watching. And the fourth indicator is the number of quiz attempts. Because of the structure of the examined MOOC participants, which is obligatory for university students and open for the external participants, the clustering was done on both of the groups. Now, let's look at the first case, which is the university students. We have come up with four classes. The first cluster is a group with a low activity among all the variables. There were only 10 students there, and most of them have a high dropout rate. The second cluster uh, included 154 students, and most of these participants completed the course successfully. And the third cluster is 206 participants, and this was the largest group. However, the difference between the previous cluster is in watching the videos. The last cluster, which is the smallest group, and it only includes four students, and these actually have been more social and writing more often on the forums. Now, let's have a look on the second case, which is the external learners. The clustering algorithm came up with three clusters. Cluster number one, and this group includes 42 participants. Actually, this group uh, have a, a low writing frequency, but a higher certification ratio, which is 76%, and the total number of quiz attempts was high. Cluster number two, and it includes only eight participants. The certification ratio was 100%, and all the MOOCs indicators activity were high. Cluster number three, and this group included the rest of the participants. The certification ratio was below 1%, and the MOOCs activities was very low compared to the other clusters. By analyzing the clusters, we think the possibility to portray students' behavior in the MOOC becomes possible nearby. However, a study by Elton in 1996, which examined the general strategies to motivate learners in the classes, meets a similar scheme of our clustering results. Now, let's have a look at the Cryer scheme. The first group, which is the dropout, describes the one who are not interested in the course subject nor score positive results. This class represents cluster number one of the university students and cluster number three of the external participants. This profile share common patterns of being inactive among all the MOOC variables and the certification rate is low. A group number two, which is called playing the system and actually these uh, type of participants, they usually do various skips on the video or actually they don't watch the video, but they finish the course successfully. And this is why they are named playing the system. The third group, which is called rebellions, and actually these students fail to complete the course because of bad exam preparations, but they show uh, an interest in the course. The last class is the students whom their commitment is high, and these are called the perfect students. They might be the appropriate name for them because every MOOC platform looks to have such students. Their certification rate is high, and their activity among MOOC indicators are also high. Mm -hmm. To summarize the results, we showed how we use learning analytics to cluster the participants of the EIDI course. We showed two different cases. The first one is the university students, and the second one is the learners who are from outside the university. The clustering outcomes for the first case was four groups, and the clustering results for the second case were three groups. At the end, 
we compared our results with the Cryer scheme and we saw that actually there are no big differences between the face-to-face -face classes and learning and the online learning. Moreover, we came up uh, into clustering the university students into more groups than uh, the external ones and we studied the behavior of both of the cases. Finally, I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.